Another special report released last night from the Committee of Privileges Hearings into the complaint against former Workers' Party MP Raisa Khan. The report, the fourth one so far, detailed testimonies from WP Chairman Sylvia Lim and WP Central Executive Committee Member Associate Professor Jameis Lim. During a hearing on Monday of more than three hours, Ms Lim told the Committee of Privileges that for months she knew of Ms Khan's lie in Parliament but did not discuss with fellow leaders a time frame for addressing this matter as she had left WP Chief, WP Chief Pritam Singh to handle it. This as she believed Mr Singh knew Ms Khan best and was guiding her. Ms Lim also said she did not think it was an option for Ms Khan to come clean at the October 5th sitting of Parliament as Ms Khan and the WP leaders needed time to carefully structure a statement that Ms Khan would be comfortable with. Meanwhile, Associate Professor James Lim responded to the committee's question on whether the fact that three WP leaders knew of Ms Khan's lie would be material information. So let's just take Mr Singh's evidence. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we put Ms Khan's one aside for, for the time being. That Ms Khan had lied on the 3rd of August but had confessed to senior leaders on both the 7th and the 8th of August, a few days later. Yes. Right? Um, as compared to what you had known at the 30th November CC meeting and before, which is basically she lied, she lied, and then she confessed, right? Yes. August, October, November. There's this uh, evidence by Mrs. Singh that actually she had, Ms. Khan had confessed on 7th and 8th of August and come clean. Would that be a relevant fact uh, in this episode, relevant, relevant fact. I'm not talking about aggravating, mitigating. Is it relevant that you so, lied but you confessed a few days later? As I explained earlier on, um, what is material, um, of course, is potentially subject to some uh, degree of independent interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, but I think without um, additional information on context, it is not possible to assert whether it is material or not definitively. I'm not talking uh, about material, I'm talking about whether it's relevant. Well, so, I, I, okay, I, I guess I used the terms um, uh, interchangeably. interchangeably, but le uh, le let me explain, perhaps, if, sure. if you're willing. Mm. Uh, so, for instance, if, and this is purely hypothetical, but if uh, she had shared with the leadership and the leadership said, uh, we hear you. Um, we would like you uh, to nevertheless subsequently tell the truth, um, but we'll give you some time. In my view, um, the fact that they knew would not have been material, would not have been relevant. Mm. Um, this would be consistent with, uh, as you said, the narrative that um, Pritam, Mr. Singh, had shared. Uh, if instead it is consistent with the narrative that Raisa has shared, uh, that they had um, told her to, in her words, take it to the grave, um, then that would be relevant and material. Oh, so I, for me, mm. whether it would have been relevant or material would have depended on the context. Yep. And I had trusted at the time, uh, and still do, that they kept the, uh, that whatever material, if it was material, they would have uh, shared that with me. So uh, given that they did not, I trusted that it was not material. Joining me now to further break down the latest report is senior political correspondent Tam Yen Si. Yen Si, how do both testimonies by WP Chairman Sylvia Lim and WP Central Executive Committee Member Associate Professor James Lim fit into the saga so far? Do their accounts fill the gaps or address some of the previous unanswered questions? Hi, Harianto. So when uh, Ms. Sylvia Lim met the committee on Monday, what she said was very similar to what we've already heard from 
Workers' Party Chief Pitam Singh and Workers' Party Vice Chair Faisal Mana. Basically, all three of them have denied ever telling Ms. Raisa Khan to lie and have said that they were merely giving her time to sort out her issues. But what stood out for me was that Ms. Lin had left Mr. Singh to settle the issue with Ms. Khan. As we know, by August 8, Mr. Singh, Ms. Lin and Mr. Faisal had all known about Ms. Khan's lie in Parliament after she confessed uh, to it at a meeting with them. But Ms. Lin told the Committee of Privileges that she basically did not follow up at all with Ms. Khan after this meeting because she had expected Mr. Singh would do it. Her rationale was that Mr. Singh knew Ms. Khan best and had been guiding Ms. Khan throughout her time as MP. This is pretty much what Mr. Faisal had said. Uh, he too did not ask questions or do anything about the matter after that August 8 meeting. And he too told the committee that he didn't act because he had full trust that Mr. Singh would know what to do. Um, of course, Mr. Singh is a party chief and also leader of the opposition, so none of this is very surprising. But it is interesting to learn that from Ms. Lim's and Mr. Faisal's perspectives, uh, Mr. Singh has played a more central role in this saga. Um, as for Associate Professor Jameis Lim, he gave us a better idea of what was going on among the Singkang GRC team uh, when all this transpired. Uh, when Ms. Khan decided to resign from the party, one of the factors she said was that she felt she had lost the confidence of her Sengkang GRC teammates. Um, from some of the messages that we heard during the hearing, uh, it seems, you know, Ms. Khan was resigned to the fact that her Sengkang GRC team leader, Ms. He Ting Ru, would not be on her side. Uh, she mentions that Ms. He did not want to meet her. Uh, from Associate Professor Lim's testimony, we find out that he actually favoured the party giving Ms. Khan a second chance, but yet he felt it was no longer feasible because she had lost the support of residents and more importantly, the volunteers and party members on the ground in Singh Khan. Raisa Khan, the three WP leaders, Pritam Singh, Sylvia Lim, Faisal Manap and CEC member Prof Lim have now given their testimonies so what's next in the course of the Parliamentary Committee's investigation? Is anyone else expected to be called upon to testify? Um, the committee has heard from eight people and held almost 28 hours worth of hearings so far. And it has said that it will hear evidence as it sees fit. So really it's anyone's guess who they may call up. But some possible you know, candidates with links to the matter might be other Singkang MPs or maybe even people from the Workers' Party Central Executive Committee, um, or perhaps even the police since Ms. Khan's lie had to do with the mishandling of a sexual assault case. But we do know that after all the fact-finding, the committee will deliberate on their findings and put together their recommendations in a complete report to Parliament. Yen Si, thanks for the insights. The Straits Times' senior political correspondent, Tam Yen Si.